Hello, welcome back to another vlog on the making of a season in hell. What a journey we've gone on together. Um, and we have wrapped block two of shooting. Um, we shot again in Feathert in Wexford in Ireland uh, for two weeks. Uh, it went really well and with the change in the weather because we have beautiful weather when we're down there. The weather's just changed so dramatically over the last few days that it feels like a lot longer since we wrapped even though it's only been about a week. But I've been working every day and uh <coughs> oh sneeze there's there's a warning that uh, the weather has changed but the weather's changed so dramatically it feels like a lot longer since we wrapped and uh, i've been working every day and that's why i haven't had the chance to vlog before this and uh, but on the plus side of working i'm just going to say i got these cool kind of lights um and we did some uh, night shoots we did two three night shoots on the thing and one thing i've learned just from doing uh, night shoots is that you always need more light uh, so our amazing AD Joseph Fuller had uh, not exactly these but similar kind of LEDs that we used as work lights and little fill in lights so they were great to have so I said I must get myself some of these so I, I got uh, three of these and work with a um, an employee discount so I got them for like 8 euro each and they're 10 watts if there's one thing I've learned from making from filming at night is that you need more lights you need more lights you need more lights this video is not sponsored by Well Tool. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> you know, if you wanna reach out. So in block two, we shot for two weeks, and we shot uh, every day. We had just two days off. We shot a huge variety of stuff. We went back. We added new stuff in the house. We reshot stuff in the house. We went back to the woods, shot some new shots, reshot some old stuff. We went back to the garden center. We're very kind to let us film in there again. Um, we did a green screen day. We did a full uh, green screen day in New Ross Theatre because we just really needed the space to put up not even a massive green screen but a semi medium sized green screen and we couldn't really do that in the house so we were very lucky to be able to do that in New Ross which was only about 15 or 20 minutes away from the house. We also finally went up to Fort Mountain which was one of my favourite things that I was looking forward to. Um, we shot a chase scene. Chase scene up in Fort Mountain where Harry uh, played by Michael Car Parle is being pursued by the aliens and we shot some cool stuff there on the drone the Insta360 uh, and the Black Magic um, so yeah that was really cool and really pleased so one of the main things that I want to talk about in this vlog is apart from just to update you about the film and that we all survived block two um, and it was really it was really intense like I'm still having dreams where I wake up at like 3 a.m. and I think everyone from the film is in my room and they're asking me what are we filming next and i i don't know what we're doing next so we're still getting over that but it's really intense it's an intense experience to make an independent feature film that's really one of the hardest things but anyway one thing i want to talk about is the stuff that we reshot um so like i'm saying we shot some new stuff uh we reshot some scenes we added in some new some new stuff to scenes from last year and yeah so in terms of what we reshot um uh, two of the most substantial scenes that we reshot are both at the start of the movie so yeah two of the see two of the really substantial scenes that we reshot are right at the start of the movie and um, the first one is a scene where ben uh, played by the brilliant actor connor Dwan, is trying to convince harry played by uh, michael parrell to try and do another show and Harry's depressed, lethargic, he doesn't want to do the show. Now, we shot this scene last year with pretty much exactly the same um, content of the scene. But it didn't work for a variety of reasons. One, it didn't work because the scene was too long as it was written. It was, it was not giving the audience the information that they needed. And it was giving them too much information and not the information that they needed. And um, just the, the blocking of it didn't really work. Uh, you can see here in this clip I had uh, Harry lying down on the sofa and Ben uh, pacing back and forth behind him. And it was just too long was the primary issue with that scene. And I felt very strongly that the scene, that the film needs to have a number of strong scenes at the start of the film. Ideally, I'll go through the film, but certainly at the very start to ensure that the audience feels that they're in for a quality experience. And so this is something like the third or fourth scene in the film. 
and I felt very strongly that had to be uh, redone essentially and done to a higher standard than we had done uh, last year. So uh, in the reshot version, we uh, sh we instead we set the action in the kitchen rather than the living room in the same house. Very lucky to have on the day some really beautiful uh, light coming in through the window and that really gave the scene a lot more kind of life. Um, the blocking was pretty much the same in terms of Harry was sitting down instead of lying down but it still made his movements a little bit easier and made it easier to capture them um, rather than him lying flat you know we were able to move the camera a little bit more around him. Connor uh, playing Ben is still pretty much the same standing over him um, but the scene is shorter, um, substantially shorter. It's gone from a five-page scene to a three-page scene. And um, we also took some time this year, I think maybe in June, or, or maybe in June, myself and Connor also did a rehearsal of that scene. And we really rewrote it several times. And I also did storyboards and an animatic. Um, so we really worked hard to try and get the scene as good as it can be. Um, so another scene that I wasn't happy with last year is a scene almost fo almost directly after the Connor and uh, Connor and Harry scene, the Ben and Harry scene, is where Aidan O'Sullivan and Gemma Curran playing uh, Irish guards Maria and Liam come around to visit Harry and issue him a warning. Um, so there was just so many things with the, wrong with this scene last year. Um, where to even start? Uh, the color temperature was actually wrong. I actually crossed the line. Um, the blocking was very much static. They arrive at the door, they don't move there. Um, and again, the scene was too long. I think it was a five page scene and it just wasn't working for me at all. Even when I flipped one of um, Harry's side around, it still didn't look right, you know, when you cross the line and when you try and flip it, it still never looks quite right. Um, and even when I edited down the scene to a shorter length from five pages to two pages, it still wasn't quite correct. And it felt unnatural and didn't feel quite correct. So again, that was something I felt very strongly that I wanted to reshoot to just to try and get rid of really the static nature of that scene. So now in this uh, reshot rehearsal footage that you can uh, that you're seeing, you can see what we're doing with the scene now, instead of staying outside, Aidan O'Sullivan now pushes his way into, into Harry's house, past Harry, and goes down and has a nose in the corridor, while Gemma remains uh, outside the door delivering a lot of the dialogue, and Harry is kind of caught in the middle. And that just immediately created a much more dynamic scene with Harry, like I say, caught in the middle, looking left and right, trying to take in this information, and it just gives the scene a lot more movement, a lot more energy, Um. And uh, I also didn't cross the line, which was good. And it came down to, I think, a two-page scene. Um, so, yeah, that was a big difference. And I'm really glad we did that. And the lighting was better as well. I feel I've improved more as a cinematographer. And we got to place some lights. So when Aidan is going down the corridor, we had the aperture on Gemma lighting her up outside. We had the Godox in the corridor just off, there, off, off camera left. And we also had some of Joseph's LEDs, I think, going from the stairs, going down. Because you get this really high exposure outside. And, you're tr and because the camera is moving, essentially, from outside to inside, you have to work really hard to balance that. So I think we did a, I did a pretty good job on that, you know. So, yeah, pretty pleased with that. So, uh, apart from reshooting stuff, we also did completely uh, new stuff. One of the scenes that was completely new was the scene where... Harry actually does some gardening in Brian and Sarah's house. And that was an important scene, uh, not just from the point of view of the gardening plot, because we saw Harry meeting the couple, we saw him looking at the garden for the first time, we saw him going to the garden centre to buy plants, but we never actually saw him gardening. So that was very important. And that was an important aspect of the film that needed to be in there, obviously. And the other was we never really had Harry walking away from the show um after discovering that they're aliens you know we kind of were missing that beat so we were able to include both of those things in this scene and that was very uh fortunate to do and i'm really glad we got that scene in there i think um the film will be better for that scene um, and this was a scene where we did some fun blocking so we had so we started with harry where he turns his back to the camera he turns around 
as he turns around I kind of pull back uh, Connor comes in brings Harry forward so I'm coming back with the camera as the two of them are coming forward then in the background uh, we had everyone kind of coming in with these trees and planting them in in the background and then as I continue to come back while the trees are coming in and they're still coming forward uh, we had David stand up in the frame as the camera uh, guy and that was really fun bit to do and it took uh, six or seven takes and the guys were carrying those trees which were quite heavy but it, it came together pretty well I'm really glad and we were very lucky to Country Life Garden Centre in Wexford that let us borrow those trees for a few hours because they looked really beautiful and um, it was essential in, it was an essential part of the film to really have that moment where he looks like he's going to do some planting as well as doing that we also did some night shooting wow night shooting is super super hard uh, it's not something i have a lot of i mean i've done it but uh, I, I don't have a lot of experience doing it to doing it with the complexity that we were doing it and the complexity i'm talking about is that we had a generator and smoke uh, and and all that out in, out in the woods at night and it was hugely it was hugely complex and difficult um, and we had we had three we shot for three nights which doesn't sound like a lot and I would say we only shot for three hours every night I would say that's a pretty good guess maybe three and a half on the final night but three three hours on the other two nights and I think as they went along uh, I felt like I got a little bit better uh, each time I think with night shoots you just have to be super prepared and know what you want we're shooting a very specific kind of uh, classical style where each shot has a purpose and there's not a lot of room for shots that I would define as coverage and if, if a shot has kind of a sniff of coverage of it I think it'll stick out pretty obviously in the film and um, so the advantage of that being at least that if you plan the shots you can really get them done really well and um, and we did. We did a really good job on the night shoots. We had a great crew and a great cast who just really all uh, came together and we shot some really uh, good stuff. It was <laughs> it was kind of funny. On we, We've shot in these woods a number of times. They're 10 minutes from the house. And, it, and on the second night of the three nights we were shooting, uh, we had just cut and uh, this guy is there out of the blue this guy is just standing there and he's like going, do we have permission to be there? And in, in this case, we actually didn't because we thought it was publicly owned Quilto Woods. But what it turned out is eventually after after a long discussion with this guy is that it was owned by his uh, brother and uh, he was renting it out to Quilta. But it was such a, a fright when we were there and we turned around, this guy was just there and he was... He was completely baffled by what we were doing. There was just four of us there that night that he came and it just it must have been so baffling to him what we were doing. There was just four of us out there in the woods with this huge generator and this cloud of smoke around us. And he was like, he, you know, he was so baffled that he actually, he baffled himself. And he was, he was going like, he, he said like, who's in charge? I came over, oh, I was the fall guy. And he said, I've got two questions for you. And I go, okay. <laughs> and he goes, I, he goes, first, do you have permission to be here? And I goes, no, I don't. It was, it was an error on our behalf. We did have uh, permission for all the other locations and we do have insurance. But um, this uh, slipped through the net, uh, unfortunately, this woods that we were filming in. And uh, he was so baffled that we were filming there and that, and that I had admitted that we didn't have permission that he actually forgot what his second question was so then he started asking me what his second question was and oh my god it was so insane and he was this big big guy and we were just all you know wondering what's going to happen whether he's going to throw us out and he was like saying what are you doing <laughs> finally he asked us what are you actually doing here and i said oh we're making a, we're making a film and he goes oh and he goes what about and I go, oh, it's a film about aliens. And he goes, oh. And then I go, what? And he goes, do you know how many films are made about aliens? And I go, no, I don't. And he goes, a lot. And I go, well, what's the point? But eventually, like I say, it turned out his brother owned the property. But his brother was fine. Uh, and everything was above board in terms of the insurance and everything. 
so there wasn't an issue it was just must have been so it was terrifying for us that this guy came out of nowhere but it must be baffling for him god only knows what he thought we were doing there with this giant plume of smoke around us and uh this generator going uh yeah but anyway that was probably the funniest thing that happened on the shoot so um that's a wrap on block two. Woohoo! We still have more to do. We have two and a bit more scenes to do. Um, yeah, so we're going to have to schedule them in at some point and get them done. Um, obviously, I have to edit all this block's footage together. And uh, that's my priority. And paying people back for this block, which is obviously the next most important thing to do. And I take that uh, very seriously. Um... The two things we're doing, one is a small dialogue scene that we're reshooting, uh, which is the second scene in the movie. And the other thing is a much bigger thing, which is a nighttime action scene, which will require about two nights work, I would imagine. And we're, But we're just going to do those in Cork, I think, and um, that'll be the plan. Um, there was some kind of an idea that I would try and get the film done for Galway 2024, but realistically... Um, I think f filmmaking, feature filmmaking is more about playing the long game rather than the short game and I don't want to uh, rush, the uh, rush the film and potentially compromise the quality of the final product just for some arbitrary uh, film festival, you know, I think we've come too far for that. Um, I have other stuff I'm working on as well. Um, I'm actually working on just a, a, my own personal project of a this kids, this animated kids learning uh, YouTube series just for very young kids. So that's kind of cool. So I'm looking forward to doing, so I've done two more episodes. I want to do three more episodes of that and maybe launch that early in the new year. Um, I have more teaching hours coming up this year. So I need to kind of schedule that in with my home store and more job as well. Um, so there's kind of a, a, a lot to do, uh, a lot to be scheduled in and you can't really rush this thing, rush these things for a variety of reasons, not least of all those just that the money isn't there right now. But um, uh, I think in editing the new footage in and sending that out to people before Christmas, um, that'll also give us more definitive shape of what these final scenes need to be as well. Because shooting last year, taking the year to assess what we needed in terms of new scenes, helped us a lot determine the shape of what those new scenes were and I think the film is going to be better because of that. So yeah, thanks for watching. That's a, a wrap on block two. Um, I'm really pleased with it overall. I think we set a really good standard that will stand to the film in terms of not just a good uniform standard. I think at times we also went above that, especially I'm thinking of the night shooting um, with the general, with the smoke. Those were kind of new experiences uh, to me, a little bit anyway. And those were really exciting. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really pleased with it. It's it's crazy. Like this kind of project, you know, it shouldn't exist, and you have to work very hard to bring it into existence and bring it to life. And you know, boy, we we are working really hard. We are working so hard for every scene, every beat, every nuance, every character moment. Um every story point and plot point you know we are working so hard just to bring these things to life and make them as good as they can be um yeah i think i just i think i've just made up my mind at some point i must have made up my mind at some point that i'm just not going to compromise anymore i'm going to get this film god damn the way i want it you know what i mean and no matter how many times i have to reshoot or i have to re-edit or i have to relight the scene or I have to, or how many scenes I have to talk, or how many times I have to talk about it, or how many times I have to do a rehearsal, or how many storyboards or drafts of scripts, or how many animatics, I'm going to get it goddamn right, because I think it can be a really great project, and a really great film, and god damn it, we are going to get it right, you know? Um, you know, I just want to finish this film absolutely exhausted, and saying I gave it absolutely everything, that I left nothing on the table because you know I think I think I, I feel I feel like I've stumbled into making a film that in a weird way is a film that I've always wanted to make and I didn't realize it uh, until now there's so many great things about the project 
And I think just by pushing through it and not giving up and just by going through all those drafts and going through all those versions, we've arrived now at a great, cool storyline that has great character moments, great plot moments, great characters, and has some really cool, fun technology things like the Insta camera, which I didn't go into too much in this, but that's cool as well. But, you know, we're doing cool new stuff. And that's really exciting. And I just, I think the film can be really good. Uh, and I'm just not going to, I'm not going to give up until, until it's done. And until it's really good, you know, until I'm dragged off this film. It's not going to, it's not going to be done until I'm dragged off it. And we're going to get it, God damn, the way we want it. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.